Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm Catherine Shipman. My bestie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and I'm your bestie. Right. We're two besties. <laughs> two besties from the Westies. Our podcast today is sponsored by Muffin and Pooh, mm -hmm. our husbands. Ron and Kenny. Yeah. Thank you to them for allowing us to do this podcast and for supporting us in every way. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have opportunities for our listeners to become supporters yes. down the road. Right. We're working on that. Stay tuned. Yeah, please do. But in the meantime, this is episode 11, Catherine. Yay! Yeah. And our topic is COVID and how it affected us. Neither one of us contracted the virus thus far, thank God, mm -hmm. and hopefully won't. Right. Because it's still active as of right now. Uh, today is February 3rd, 2021. Mm -hmm. And there's I, a second round of it now. Well, I almost strain. feel like Groundhog Day was like the COVID groundhog. Did he see a shadow? Are we going to have more COVID? Did we have that already? It was yesterday. Oh, my. It's every year on the same day, you know. I know it is, but so I didn't always February second. Okay, I just didn't remember the date. <laughs> well, if today's the third, then no, I mean oh. I didn't know Groundhog's Day was February second. <laughs> oh, okay, is not okay, I... okay. I was, I was thinking maybe you needed some help. <laughs> All right, well let's move on mm. because, <laughs> because I'm getting the look. What? That okay. now it's now it's verbal. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, we have some takeaways today yeah. and the three takeaways that you can expect from today's episode. The first one is we are going to share the top 10 things that we either did during COVID or we learned during COVID. Mm -hmm. The second takeaway, we're going to share why people are not meant to be isolated. Yeah, that's it, a big one. It is big. And then the third one, I'm going to share the true story of why I refused when asked to do stand-up comedy online. Mm. Mm. Right. So that's a juicy story. All right. Well, let's jump right in then, Catherine, to uh, the first the first topic of the top 10 things that we either did during COVID and during the quarantine and all of that, or we learned from being quarantined and, and shut down. Yeah. So what have you got on your list there? Well, first of all, I want to start out by saying there's a list of things that I thought I was going to do as soon as <laughs> yeah. we found out that, well, first it started with there couldn't be more than, I think, 13 people in restaurants. And this was in the Chicagoland area that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So then it started to look like, oh, really? Okay. So it sounds like we can't do as much. So, you know, I started thinking then. But then we had the full um, quarantine mitigation shutdown. And I thought, wow, finally. <laughs> like, I was in awe and just, you know, kind of well, disappointed. Well, sure. Everybody was. Right. But at the same time, I, I was a little bit like, what? I always had these books that I swore I was going to read if I ever broke a leg or <laughs> was in the hospital. <laughs> or there was, was gonna... a worldwide pandemic. Well, I had, did not think of that. But I did, of course, when we got shut down. I thought, I'm going to read those books. Okay. I am going to read, read, read. I'm going to get with the Lord more. <laughs> I am going to, um, hopefully, with my cellies, which are... <laughs> Your roommates. Yeah. Uh, my family play some more games, which my daughter remind, re reminded me right before we came here that we did indeed play some really... And games. Well, well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, that really is a positive if you can spend time with your family and play games. Yeah. Whether the reason is because of a pandemic or because you just want to stay home and do that. Mm -hmm. It's always positive. Yeah, for sure. Cool. I also thought I was going to cook some awesome meals. Of I course. mean, I was going to make some rock star <laughs> meals. Right. <laughs> Me too. Sort of. <laughs> right. But then... Dr. Fauci came on. <laughs> yeah. And I was glued to the TV at, well, for a while. You know, what What were they going to say next? What's the new mitigation? What What's going on? And then what was the scarf lady going to wear next? Oh, what, yeah. What, the right. Scarf doctor. What yeah. kind of scarf was she going to have? You know, have that's on? so true that I, I was the same way. Like, oh, there she is with her scarf. Like, that was her trademark. Yeah. I don't even remember her name, but I do know who you're talking about because of the scarf. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. So it sounds like you had an, you maybe were kind of thinking this is going to be very temporary Mm -hmm. and, and not so bad. Mm-hmm. That it'll give us time to focus on things in the house, like cooking great meals and reading books and playing games with the family. Right. I just wanted to kind of think about the positive things. Oh, I could, right. Right. That yeah. could come out of I this. think a lot of people were thinking that, oh, 15 days, flatten the curve, and then we'll all be back, yeah. back at it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it wasn't so, like that at all. No. Ugh. No. It's like bait I and said. switch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 15 days turned into 150 days. Yeah. Right. Okay, so so what else so, did you do or learn during COVID? Well, okay, so those were the things that um, I was going to do. Oh, right. But what did I do? Yeah, what, well, what's your reality? <laughs> like I said, well, I kind of led into uh, binge watching the news for a little bit there. And the yeah. daily briefing, you know. Of, well, well, yeah, because you want to know the, what, what's happening. Yeah, so I would watch the national one and mm-hmm. also the state local one. state one. Right, yeah, me too. So, but then I kind of, okay, this is, these, these things are not all productive, (laughs) but, um, I also binged, watched some Netflix. Uh, you know what I hate about Netflix? I hate. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Oh, I hate this. It's. It, yeah, it's that yeah. little thing that twirls, yeah. and it's like a vortex, and oh, it just yeah. sucks your whole brain right in with it, and pretty soon you're watching, yeah. you're glued literally to the couch and the TV. It's kind of hilarious in some ways, because it'll say, next episode, four seconds, and Kendall are like, quick, quick, <laughs> as if we don't have the pause right. remote. Right, and like you can't, yeah. you can't get out of it once oh, yeah. you're in. Oh, yeah. oh, we might as well just sit here another hour. Get me a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that other people can relate to that. I think so. Too. Certainly, we can't be the only ones that are just sucked sucked in like that. Wouldn't it be scary if we were? But we were <laughs> <know or> not. <laughs> so uh, so we did that, and every single day, uh, Kenny and I, and for a while, our girls, mm-hmm. we were so um, looking forward to your prayer Aww. time. So yeah, your prayer broadcast that you, you did every day at 630. Yeah. And so that is one thing that we did as a family. Yeah, you and did. And it was very meaningful. Yeah. Same for me. Yeah. So we did that. We did do some really neat games. Um, we did this one that I totally forgot about. But then, like I said, before I came here, Emily had journaled what we did during what, what the What kind pandemic. of game was it? We played this PowerPoint game where the PowerPoint was up on the TV, and each one of us, <laughs> I'm just thinking of Kenny's. <laughs> Did you have to make a PowerPoint? Yeah, we oh, made boy. a PowerPoint and presented it to the rest of the family Okay. in our household. And so we came up with a theme, and we had to make these bullet points uh, and support our idea, theme, whatever it was. And boy, was it fun. It was a I, lot I'm of fun. I'm going to play that game. I want to see Kenny play that game. Oh. <laughs> and Ron. I want to see what Ron would come up with. I don't know with. if I should say what his, it's not bad. Well, say it. But don't, don't be, no, don't be holding back. You, okay. Come so on now. Throwing Kenny under the bus, although Uh-oh. he would, he wouldn't care. Okay. So his PowerPoint was on how to or why do we, does one pick your nose? <laughs> <laughs> and when he, I, he first presented it, I was like, Oh, gosh. How to pick your nose and then why do you pick Or it, it was either how to or why do it or something, you know, I don't remember. The ex- but Ke- Emily and I quick watched it real quick before I came oh, down. Oh, yeah. Oh, was it funny. Well, what did he say? I have to know now. Well, you can watch the video, but I, I will, he basically but... goes into <laughs> how to do it. And he's so serious about it that that's what makes it so funny. <laughs> right. And seeing him. So we used a wand. To point out on the PowerPoint, which is our big, big screen TV, the wand was Emily's Harry Potter <laughs> wand <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, right. <laughs> so anyway, it was a lot of fun. We yeah, did that. But what were his points? Like, what were his bullet points of how to pick your nose? You really want to know. Yes. Insert your finger into your nose. Like, yes. push it as far back as it'll go without hurting. If you have a dry <laughs> finger, then be... <laughs> It's better with a dry finger because it scoops up more. About, don't let it uh, <laughs> like irritate the inside or something. I don't know. And then he says, uh, 
you know, I don't remember all of it. It's it's just. Do you know I, I used to? I actually feel uncomfortable Sorry. talking about Okay, it. I'll change the subject in a way. But I had a junior high teacher who used to pick his nose in class with the end of a Bic pen cap. No. For real. Yeah. He used to take it and take off the Bic pen cap. You know what I'm talking about. I sure do. And the, the sharp point of it. And yeah. he would just shove it up his nose. Like this, you mean? Yeah, but the kind that were from like the 70s, you know, I don't, not not that one exactly, but oh. the kind that were clear, it was like a clear pen barrel. Uh-huh. And then it was like a bright blue if the ink was blue or it was bright oh. or it was like a shiny black mm-hmm. if the ink was black or red if the ink was red. He would pull off that end cap and shove it right in there Oh, and pull out whatever. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How did we get down that rabbit trail? We'll blame Kenny. All right, it's all it's on you, Kenny. <laughs> all right. Well, that so, that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. We also watched. This was really great. We watched old slides. Oh um, yeah. That were my parents' old slides from the early '60s. And very so very good. And yeah. Catherine lost her dad during COVID, mm-hmm. and so he didn't pass away because of covid he didn't have covid but he died during that period of time so that must have been a very healing time to watch those old slides it was very good yeah very much so um uh, so another thing that we did or i did is you and i um discovered snapchat oh yes <laughs> snapchat and so we would snapchat each other we see did. all the things i said i was going to do i'm on snapchat <laughs> <laughs> and t- snapchat so this is 2021 and snapchat's been around forever yeah. our kids have been using oh, it yeah. but i mean i i had heard of snapchat but Same. i had never used it mm-hmm. oh gosh that was fun oh yeah okay so also you and I also did the makeup tutorial. Yes, we did. I forgot about that. Yeah, we wanted to kind of do something that would make people laugh. Yes. I, I, you know, I don't yeah. know why we did it, actually. We did it just because we had time to do it, and we wanted to experiment with video creation. Um, our My son, Caleb, shot the video and edited it. Ed- edited ed- it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Saying that it's hard to say that yeah. word. He was the editor of the video, and basically, it's me uh, ta- talking, <laughs> I'm just thinking about and it. Catherine is sitting behind me, and her 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 arms are my arms to put on this makeup. It's on my YouTube channel, so yeah. if you go to YouTube and put Tracy DeGraff in the search, you'll find it. It is quite funny. Oh yeah, I want to watch that oh. again. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, so I did that, and also one thing. Oh well, and as you mentioned, mm-hmm. um, my dad passed away, yeah. and that was early. Uh, well, in it was May, early right? May, yeah. And so we were still in one of the phases. I don't know which one, but it was still we, very we strict. Were, yeah, we were still locked up. Yeah. Yes, but um, we had put we meaning my siblings and I had put um, two of their homes uh, up for sale. And so there were two homes to go through. I'm mm, mentioning this because yeah. I also got really, really sucked into that. And so that occupied a lot of my time um, going through their stuff, pictures, right. and not just pictures. I mean, we're talking documents. We're talking years and years of things. So that really was, um, that did take up a big amount of time. It sure did. Yeah. And also another thing that I did mm-hmm. that... Um, was very, very interesting to do in 2020 uh, with everything that was going on, not only the pandemic, but the political stuff and sure. riots and things. I did the yeah. census job. Oh, that's right. You yeah, did. I did. And boy, <laughs> that that was something. It was extremely interesting. And yes. Um, and why they went forward with that. Mm-hmm. With well, they COVID. had to get the census numbers. Uh, yeah. But I would I. Hey, at hey. least you weren't Jesus and Mary, you know, or, or yeah, not, right. Je- well, Jesus was in their tummy, but Joseph, Joseph and, Mary and Mary on yeah. a donkey. Yeah. There was a census. I mean, census is a thing. You gotta, you gotta respect the census. Yeah. A lot of people didn't think so, though. <laughs> <laughs> and they let you know it. <laughs> so Catherine is, she's, I, I think that one of your great qualities is that you're kind, you're, um, very gracious. You're 
hospitable to people. You're mm-hmm. not rude. And so she starts out with the census job and she has, oh. <laughs> she has to go around, you know, the people that don't answer the census, right? She, they have to, be, I'm going to tell you what, people, you got to answer that stuff. You mm-hmm. got to answer the census or else the government is going to send somebody like sweet little Catherine <laughs> to your door. And at first, you know, I, I'm sure that you were like your normal self. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, Catherine was like, I know you're in there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And we weren't allowed, we weren't supposed to peek in the windows or like the side lights of one's yeah. door and things yeah. like that. But you can't help it. You, know, you can't help it. Yeah. You know, especially when you see the blinds move. <laughs> <laughs> she would send me videos of like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. She would just send me telepathic messages. Well, of myself. Yes. <laughs> All right. So what else did you do during COVID, Catherine? Uh, okay. So another thing. Yes. I sort of somewhat got addicted. How did I cram all of this in? I don't know. But I also got kind of addicted to the marketplace. Marketplace oh, online. on Facebook? Yeah. Like, oh, yes, you did. I did. You would travel for hundreds of miles. Hundreds. For a $15 item. Yes. <laughs> busted to get out and and so other states around us weren't as strict by the time i started doing that where did you go where was the furthest that you went oh uh, pretty far east in indiana yeah Um, did you go like to to ohio or no okay no 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 just that's good out of state right right but i was cautious everybody listeners it i you know I was cautious, no, of as were the people selling what they sold. So I, I, anyway, I had a lot of fun. It's kind of scrolling through that and get. Well, wait, see, you know, I forgot to mention when we entered uh, the stage of of the mitigation and the quarantine. I also was just coming out of depression. Like mm. I was really in the dumps. Um, really ran out of my medicine. And at first, that was not intentional. But then when I ran out, I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. Antidepressant it's medicine. Antidepressant, yeah. yeah. And you were thinking, I'm just going to not take it because yeah. I feel okay. But then mm-hmm. you, you didn't really feel okay. I didn't. And I thought it was because we were under a lot of stress, at, or oh, I was yes. at the time. We yeah. had just moved. Um, and there was just a lot going on with that. And I just had some other stresses in my life. So then depression, and I really felt pretty low. I didn't really feel like sharing it, you yeah. know, just felt really low. Anyway, so, um, and I wasn't sleeping. It was a nightmare, just awful. So then I, I did get back on my medicine. And after a couple of weeks, I started to feel better. And then Good. the quarantine happened. Oh, yeah. Right. So when I say that I was busting to get out of the state, that was part of it. I, I just needed. Yeah. I just needed. That's understandable. To get out. Yeah. I so. think that depression under normal circumstances is difficult and challenging for all of us. Mm-hmm. I have suffered with it myself mm-hmm. and know exactly what you're talking about. Under the pressure of a worldwide pandemic and mm-hmm. a quarantine mm-hmm. and the isolation that we're going to talk about in a little bit here. I mean, that just magnifies depression mm. to a level that we all have to be mindful of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good for you that you got back on your medicine and started to feel a little bit better. Right. And so my point with that was um, the reason, too, that I was on Marketplace a lot was because we had just moved into this home. hmm and it was a lot smaller than the home that we used to be in. So we got rid of a lot of things. Um, but there were a couple spots where I needed to put right. something else. So I needed a project. Yeah, I just sure. needed a project. And so um, so that was like therapy to me. Yeah. Just getting on the, the marketplace and what could I get for right. less. And right, right. So Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Anything I think else? That's, that's it? Yeah, I think that's, well, you know, other than minor things but those were the main that I wanted to share well very good Mm -hmm. very exciting what do you have Trace well I I put down 10 10 items the first one is I discovered podcasts yeah you did yeah because I hadn't been listening to podcasts Mm -hmm. and um, as you know it was my manager Mike Smith who recommended that 
I launch a podcast because I can't be out there doing comedy. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think his exact words were something like, I encourage you to launch a podcast ASAP. (laughs) Something like that. And here we are. Yeah. And it took um, several months of figuring out what is a podcast? How does one listen to a podcast? What kind of content do people like to listen to? And by the way, if you are listening to us right now, please tell us what you would like us, any topics that you would like us to share with you, because we want to to bring you the content that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, one pod in, in my research for figuring out the podcast world, I started listening to podcasts. And I, I found one called Ear Hustle, which is about life inside San Quentin prison. Yeah, I recall you talking about right. that. Who doesn't want to be a fly in the wall in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was very interesting. And this girl who um, she started doing these podcasts with the, with the inmates um, as part of a volunteer situation. She would go into the prison and teach inmates how to use audio equipment. She's like a journalist. Hmm. And she's just very caring and very kind. And and anyway, I, I was kind of addicted then to her storytelling because I really appreciated the way that she told a story. Hmm. Um, and then, of course, I wanted to know what, what was life like. And then they talked about their cellies. This, you mentioned that before. Yeah. That's a term. That's a prison term. Yeah. Your cellmate is is um called your celly Mm -hmm. and when you're quarantined with your husband of 30 years and he's sitting two feet from you and you're going are you breathing is that you (laughs) breathing is that the sound you're making now would you please stop (laughs) because it's annoying me or i know you're chewing (laughs) (laughs) yeah so quarantine it thankfully I did also learn this. This isn't on my list, but I did learn Oops. that I get along pretty well with my cellies. Yeah. You yeah. know, my husband and I get along really well. We like to be together. Yeah. We And I really did appreciate that. I mourned and grieved that I couldn't be out doing what I believe God has called me to do with comedy mm-hmm. and sharing the gospel message. That's my calling. Mm-hmm. And my calling was put on the back burner mm-hmm. because I can't, you can't do it right now. But I got to be with my cellies, so yeah. I was cool with that. Yeah. All right, another one I put that I learned about Instacart. It's oh, yes. changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> I right. I love Instacart. Mm-hmm. If you're not familiar with Instacart, it's a very easy to navigate app that you can get on your smartphone, and then you can shop on your phone for your groceries. Yeah. And you can have your you can click for your groceries to be delivered to your home for a fee. Or you can click for you'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. And I just pick it up because our little town doesn't have delivery service because there aren't enough people here. We're in a suburb of Chicago, but it's small. And there's just not enough people that live here for the for the drop off service. So I just pick it up and it works out great. And Catherine does it, too. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. All right. I also put down that I learned that my dad was a genius. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because my tell. Yeah. And um. If you haven't heard Catherine and I talk about our similar journey, because my dad passed away just about six months before or five months before her dad. But my father used to purchase toilet paper and water by the truckload. Mm. I mean, in pallets. Yeah. And he would store it. pickle relish. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You remember that? (laughs) Yeah. My dad did a party one time and he he went to like a big Costco to buy stuff for this party. And instead of getting... A small jar of relish, like from the grocery store, he bought a big giant one. Yeah. How, how, anyway, <laughs> we had pickle relish till he died. And we're like, what are we going to do with the pickle relish? I don't know. Uh-huh. But my dad used to stock up on stuff. And if he had been alive during the pandemic, he would have been proud as a peacock that he had all the toilet paper yeah. that he needed for the next several years. So I learned that. Um, I learned that I need in-person worship. Yes, I actually had that on my list, too. I had a feeling you were going yeah. to talk about that. Yeah, because I thought that the online worship was was novel at the beginning, like the first week I was all engaged, but it was hard to keep my attention, mm-hmm. and then I just couldn't do it. So I really, I really appreciate in-person worship. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, the first time we did communion at home. Oh, yeah, right. That was 
a, a strange experience and it was kind of in a way it was like oh we, we you so got your family, coffee and your toast <laughs> no we actually got a little bit of like real a, wine yeah real wine a little there shot go. glass size yeah and we had crackers and we just waited for our right it, you know right for indication the process, for sure to do that and uh so that was very different but i you know i don't know if we ever did it again um but i didn't want to do it again you yeah yeah Anyway, it was just tough because I think, as you pointed out when we were going over your list, we thought it was going to be more temporary than it turned out to be. Mm -hmm. And so then it was just kind of, um, I was getting weary of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here's one. This is a sad one. I cried on the physical therapy table just thinking about people not having a ventilator. You know, yeah. I, I had uh, an injury. I had a shoulder mm -hmm. injury mm -hmm. prior to COVID. And then they shut down all the surgeries, the elective surgeries, mm -hmm. which you know this, Catherine, mm -hmm. that I thought when they said elective surgeries, mm -hmm. that meant the jobs, you know, the nose jobs, the other jobs. Mm -hmm. No, that's all of the surgeries. So no hip replacements, no knee, anything that's not required to save your life was considered like elective. Well, and not even colonoscopies, which I think that's not elective, but it was considered elective. Well, right. So there were a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. probably people listening to us right now who had surgeries or procedures that were put off because of COVID. Yeah. Well, because I had this damaged shoulder mm -hmm. and I was in a lot of pain 100% of the time. So I was like taking Tylenol on a daily basis just mm -hmm. to function. Yeah. I was in physical therapy because the therapy office was open, but the surgery center was not. And the therapy was to try to help me stay loose and keep it, to help alleviate some of the pain, keep it iced, all that. And I'm laying there on the physical therapy table. And that was when there was like this shortage of ventilators. And I just couldn't help but think about a human being who needed oxygen who yeah. couldn't get it and the tears just started to come yeah. and they just kept coming and the therapist is trying to crank on my shoulder and he's going do you need a minute i go no i'm fine he probably thought that you were crying from the oh you're from the pain yeah it hurts <laughs> no he well we were talking about the news so, you know and it was just me in the clinic there was nobody else in there mm. i mean it was just surreal yeah so th i i think that the emotions of the pandemic obviously mm. were were at the top of of my emotional meter and then i have i have this thing about claustrophobia anyway myself like i have mild claustrophobia mm -hmm. and the thought of someone needing air and not being mm. able to get it just crushes my spirit mm -hmm. like I could cry now I'm not going to because yeah. now <laughs> they have all, right. all the ventilators that they need yeah thank god mm -hmm. all right just a couple more oh this one you'll recall I put I will and I did cross state lines to worship mm -hmm. to go to goodwill and to get Mexican food oh, right. <laughs> remember so, when we did that yeah. my birthday was we wonderful. did yeah. we went to celebrate Catherine's birthday which is in May Gosh. and that well, was the day before my dad's funeral. service. Yeah, so it was yeah, a rough. So called. Service. It was a rough time, and everything in Illinois was closed. Mm -hmm. But Indiana is only a hop, skip, and a jump from yeah. where we live, and they were open. So we we crossed state lines. We weren't really supposed to. Our governor was saying, "Don't do that." We disobeyed that. So sorry, governor. Guilty. I mean, yeah, but we did cross over. We did, but we we went we, to church. Well. And we went to get uh, to go to Goodwill, and, and then we went to Mexican food. And let's tell the listeners too when we did that, we uh, well riding with you is like riding with a family member <laughs> anyway. It's so true. Uh, there was that, and then when we got to the destinations of what you know the places right. you, you just said, um, we were mitigations were in place. That's we very had true. Our masks we on. followed all the rules. Yeah, we of, were six feet apart. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so. The only rule that we broke was the governor of Illinois was saying, please don't cross state lines. But we just did because we had to. We were losing it. We well, needed... Like I said, I was just coming out of depression and listen to listen to me making excuses. Well, oh, my dad. I, yeah. It was just a lot. Yeah. OK, here's another one. Just two more. Um, I put down that gaining weight is very easy. Mm. <laughs> so I, 
definitely gained weight during COVID. Mm. And now working on that, getting mm-hmm. getting rid of the weight. Okay, yay for it's me. It's all behind you. <sighs> Literally. Okay, and the last one I put, I learned to never, ever say it can't get any worse. Yes. Because it can. Yes, I learned that too. Oh. Mm-hmm. The minute never you, say never. Yeah, the minute you think, oh, it can't get any worse than this. How mm-hmm. could it get, how can it get worse than mm-hmm. And then you go, oh, my gosh. Yes, it can. You know, I remember saying, now that you're saying that, Mm -hmm. I remember saying, um, expect the unexpected. Yeah. Because that's what kept happening. Just the unexpected. Yeah. And so I'm sure that everybody can relate. I mean, it was a unique event. Mm -hmm. And we all went through it. Yeah. Everybody has a different take on it. The whole wide world got the memo. Yeah. That, well, to, there was a message out there. Yeah. To this day, sometimes I'm still not used to the masks thing, even though, you know, you could say you are, but but then again, I'm not. When I see people, just different random people walking in and out of some place with a mask on, I think, wow, the whole world got the memo. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's unbelievable. It is. But all right. Hey. Yes. On a different note, Mm -hmm. one more thing that I thought was kind of funny that I discovered (laughs) during um, the pandemic Uh was TikTok. Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, that's because your girls. I was just going to say, my girls, um, you know, we were, they were bored. So we're sitting around. They're like, look, mom, (laughs) look how funny this is. And so (laughs) I didn't get on it myself that much, but my girls would show me and then oh my goodness that's funny. very funny well good <laughs> well you have to, you know you have to have some fun yeah all right well let's let's take a transition and let's talk about isolation Catherine and why is it that people are not meant to be isolated yeah let's take it down a notch let's, all of a sudden let's go deep dive <laughs> <laughs> right well, you know we're not not made we're not created to be secluded for very long. Of yeah. course, we need some quiet time on our own, you know, or with the Lord, but definitely not to stay that way. Well, um, and, you know, you think about people in inside, right, in prisons, mm-hmm. and they put them in solitary confinement. Yeah. And that is um, a torture for some, Oh. you know, and then... Guilty. Uh, well, and then our seniors during COVID were kind of put in solitary confinement. You know, my aunt who passed away during, she she did have COVID and she died in mm-hmm. a nursing home. Sadly, she was stuck in her room. Like they wouldn't oh. even let them come out of their room. And my cousins were visiting her from outside, you know, through the window. I mean, when we saw that with our friend, Darlene. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. when I would see Darlene yeah, with, with her, with her mom. mom, oh my goodness, it just went right through me. And I just can't imagine being, you know, a senior and being in that position you're oh i just no no human contact no hugs not seeing your loved ones Uh, seniors were suffering from failure to thrive i mean that's like babies have that if they're uh, neglected no yeah and who wants to spend uh their last days like that yeah really yeah oh gosh Mm. All right. Well, and, uh, you know, one thing, too, on another serious note is isolation. It it opens us up for spiritual attack. Yeah. It, ju- it just does. Um, and so that is something to, to think about. Um, well, that makes but- sense because... If you think about a battle, if you're in a, if you've got two armies that are in a battle and one of them isolates the, like a certain segment of the army or whatever, so then the rest of the army can't come and help you, mm-hmm. well, you're going to be dominated. Right. Right. Um, but so, so some scripture that I looked up and there were so many I felt were so um, powerful yeah. and so fitting for this subject of um, isolation because, let's face it, a lot of people really were more ar- isolated than some of us. Like, if you weren't down the street. Yeah. I mean, I, yes, I have my family, but having you close by to be able to go out, you know, take walks yeah, and we things did like that. that, that was, it kind of, you know, it's kind of like a like a life saver, you know? Yeah. I mean, Kenny didn't really want to go for walks that much. <laughs> and my Poor girls Kenny. did too sometimes, but yeah. So anyway, so one of, um, so the first scripture that I have is Proverbs 18.1. Mm-hmm. 
one who has isolated himself seeks his own desires. He rejects all sound judgment. Mm-hmm. You get inward. In, get inward you in get your own inward. head. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Also, Genesis 2.18, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a help, helper suitable for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, then, then these are a couple of my favorites. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. And I have to say, too, that um, when I was looking these up, and actually right prior to that, I really felt that it was spirit-led. I mean, my hand mm-hmm. was going 240 when I was writing out um, the things that we just shared yeah, prior right. to this. And then as I kept going, I, f- I really questioned it, like, boy, this this is a lot to just keep reading. Mm-hmm. But then I just felt really convicted by the Holy Spirit to just share all of it. Yeah, it's the truth. So hopefully it'll touch somebody. Um. Yeah, and it's the truth. It is the truth. And the truth shall set you free. There we go. Somebody said that. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Okay, so another one is from Ecclesiastes 4.12. A person standing alone can be attacked, just like Mm -hmm. we were discussing, and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Amen. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And uh, just two more, Hebrews ten twenty four through 25. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. Yeah. As some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And, you know, look, that verse, as you just read it, it made me think of an encouragement that we could share with people right now to say, in the event that you have been separate from your your Christian faith, your, your church, if you haven't gone back yet, you know, or if you've been afraid that you're going to get the virus, at some point, put back in. Let's just encourage everybody because the verse says, don't forget, don't give up. If you mm-hmm. have, if your small group has stopped meeting, sometimes that has happened to us in terms of if the small group has stopped for some reason, like let's say we took summer break, sometimes it's hard to rev it up and get it going again in the fall. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to everybody listening, if you have stepped away from fellowship of other believers, or even if you have stepped away from connecting with friends, family, neighbors, people, try to be intentional and safe. Of course, I am not minimizing Right. anyone's opinions or anyone's right. fears of getting COVID. COVID is no joke. Right. However, I will say also, you know, may, wh- whatever, wherever your comfort level is, if it's continue to meet together, but be masked or continue to meet together, but be six feet apart. Or once you get your vaccine, then you feel more comfortable. Whatever your comfort level is, do not let the enemy tell you And by enemy, I mean the devil. Do Mm -hmm. not let the devil tell you that you don't need people because we do. We need each other. Exactly right. Um, I was just thinking about how when um, when the weather started to get better during the quarantine, I live right by um, a school, the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And in the parking lot, we would very frequently see um, mostly women parking their cars there Mm -hmm. and sitting in their cars six feet apart from their gal pal yeah and having an outing in the parking lot um so i saw there's a way to get together another thing too i just want to mention in case the listener might not know what small groups is are um that's just like a small you have your church family and then within the church um it's literally what it says small groups of couples or individuals who get together and study together Mm -hmm. pray together that kind of thing they also call it life groups so that's what that is and I was also reminded of how we Tracy and I are in a prayer group and we would meet um physically you know together and pray together but then we had to figure out a way to keep going with that and we did that 
via Zoom and FaceTime. Right. Things like that. So, yeah. Don't don't give up. Get creative. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, Very good. Yeah. And the final scripture that I wanted to share is Galatians. It comes from Galatians 6, 2. Carry each other's burdens. Mm -hmm. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. So, and I just want to say too, there's always a time though when you should be alone. You should have some time alone, alone with the Lord. Sure. Um, and that sort of thing. And we know too, like we said earlier, that this was something that was asked of us from yeah. federal and local levels. So, um, but like we just said, there's ways to stay in fellowship with one another. Yeah. And despite that. And hopefully we won't have to do this again. Right. <laughs> right. I know when I was thinking, oh, so we always try to leave tips, mm -hmm. not only encouragement and things like that, but tips. So I thought, well, well tips for the next next pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in 100 years. Here's some tips. Yeah. Pass them down through the generations. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing about isolation and all of that scripture. And I'm hopeful that it's very encouraging to those listening because we've all been through a lot. Yeah. And um, hope is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, our third point uh, that we promised to share was why I refused to do stand up online. Yeah. Why would you <laughs> refuse to be funny during a time that people really need comedy, need, oh, Tracy? That's such a good question. I was, as, as many of us were, in shock that yeah. here, what's happening? And I remember at the beginning when it was in China. And Catherine and I go to this place where there are Chinese people who give massages and they have family in China. And we had gone for a massage and I remember saying to them, how's your family? Is everybody okay? And they said, yeah, everybody's fine. Our family doesn't live anywhere near Wuhan. Mm -hmm. And my mentality was that's over there. It's yeah. not over here. I had no idea. None of us did mm -hmm. of what was about to happen. And then Febu February came and I went on a cruise where I was providing comedy on the cruise. So I was doing comedy on this cruise ship and, he and then things were starting to heat up. Yeah. It was like the middle of February. Yeah, that's back when it was just called the coronavirus. I didn't think, I don't think COVID, the word COVID came into play. You know, all I remember is hearing a little bit more about it. Yeah. And before I got on the ship, I had to sign something that said I hadn't been to China. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, still in China. I'm good. Check. We're good. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Went on the cruise. And as it turned out, my cruise ship was the last one that got into port on the return without being affected by COVID. And I was so grateful because I was like, oh my gosh, those people are stuck on those cruise ships. Yeah, I'm thinking too, my cousin Christy went immediately after you mm -hmm. and she just made it by the skin of her yeah. teeth too. Yeah, the next boat that went out on the same ship that I did, like, th like that ship was turned over and the customers were getting on as we were getting off. They went, but they weren't able to go to port Wow. How sad. Oh. oh, just to see from a distance this beautiful island and then go, I can't, can't get off the ship. <laughs> right. We got to stay. Oh, gosh. So, so to me, COVID was very far away. But as we know, it quickly became a part of our, it affected us directly. Mm -hmm. And once we shut down, so then the following month in March, I had... I had a big event on the books for Friday the 13th. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> of oh my goodness. March. It was questionable. That was right when Very. the um, amounts of people that our government in Illinois was allowing to assemble in a large gathering, the amounts kept on dropping and dropping. We were able, we got it in right under the wire. Like the church did not cancel. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we did the event. What? Well, I was just thinking how it was already so foreign, so different when before the event we, we prayed. Yeah. And so they said, circle up and pray. So yeah. I went to reach my hands out <laughs> to stand in the circle and hold yeah. hands as we prayed. And they were like, oh, no, no, no. And it just felt so foreign. Yeah. But that was the beginning of a lot. But... Yeah. And now when you go someplace, I, I don't put my hand out to shake somebody's hand because I don't know if they want yeah. to do that. Right. And no hugs or anything. It really, yeah. oh, Even oh. my doctor the other day, he gave me a... Um, an elbow a little, bump? Not oh, an a elbow. Fist bump? A fist bump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, weird. <laughs> oh well 
Okay, so so the middle of March came and and then we did that event and then that following week everything shut down at, for everybody, and then we thought Easter. Okay, we're, if we can mm. just get to Easter, well, in that period of time, as as we were just all watching the news, someone reached out to me online. Two people actually, so two fans. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> just two crickets. <laughs> two people said to me, Tracy why don't you do stand up online? Because we'll pay you to make us laugh because we were desperate. Mm. Right. And I was like, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but it's a pandemic. Yeah, (laughs) It's not funny. I can't just, first of all, even Jimmy Fallon couldn't do it. (laughs) And he's got money and people and teams. Right for him, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It just, you, stand up comedy doesn't really translate well with a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece of it was, I already shared how my heart, I don't know why it is, but like if I watch somebody suffer, I suffer with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do. It's, I have like that strong sense of empathy, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. I can't even watch movies where somebody's being beat up and yeah. stuff. I, I just, I plug my ears like a little <laughs> kid and I shut my eyes and I just go, no, 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 no. I said to the, to these tube fans, I said, I can't do comedy right now. But what I can do is provide prayer. And so that's what I did. Um, That's why I refused to do comedy online is, first of all, it's hard to do. Even somebody like Jimmy Fallon couldn't do it well. So I thought, Jimmy can't do it. Tracy (laughs) cannot do it. (laughs) But the second part of it was I didn't find anything really funny about the pandemic. And I didn't find it appropriate for me to try to crack jokes at a time like this. You know, tragedy plus time is comedy, not tragedy in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, Matthew 633 came into my head and that's the verse that I'm going to share with everybody as we, as we start to close here with our spiritual inspiration. This verse encapsulates really the pandemic for me. And the verse says, seek the kingdom of God above all else, you know, um, and other translations say, seek ye first, Mm -hmm. seek ye first the kingdom of God, meaning put God first in your life above your job, put God first in your life above politics, put God first in your life above career and, and gaining money and above your children, above fear, yes, above yourself, Mm -hmm. put him first. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. Now, righteously doesn't mean live perfectly because that's not possible. But live righteously means to do your best to do the right thing. And when you screw up, confess, repent, and, and start over. Live righteously and he will give you everything you need. In other translations, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and he he will give you all the things that you need that's that's it and in a nutshell that sums it up for me it does because Mm -hmm. i felt like wow everything's falling apart Mm -hmm. our whole world is falling apart people are dying i mean that's just so sad Mm -hmm. and the suffering and then you had as you pointed out you know we went into um riots and things and the hatred and I, the, what human beings are capable of is quite sad, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that, um, oh, also verse 34, Matthew six thirty four says, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough yeah, <laughs> for today. For sure. Yeah. So that, that was my, um, my heart. And so I decided to do a daily prayer broadcast every day at 630. Because I was, I initially started it at 6.33, but then I just kind of, well, 6.30, let's start. Mm -hmm. But I, this scripture was what was coming into my mind and my heart. Like, let's seek the Lord. Forget all this other stuff. We cannot control it. Right. Exactly right. Where are you going to have, where are you going to find your Mm -hmm. peace? If you're looking for peace in the world and it's falling apart, Mm -hmm. where are you going to find it? Exactly. Zero places. And like you said, that just sums it up perfectly yeah i mean it's it's that's what we're called to do yeah seek him first and if if 
that message didn't come through to <laughs> right. believers. Oh my goodness, because the Lord just, he allowed all of that to happen. So obviously, well, to, to, to me, it was obvious yeah. that we just got to go to him. Yeah. And if anyone is listening and you're kind of like, well, what, what does that mean practically to seek first the kingdom of God and to put him first? This would be my encouragement to anyone would be to pray, ask him, say to God, be on, be honest with yourself and honest with God to say, I don't know what it means. Meet me where I am, mm-hmm. God, and show me what you want me to know. And then open the Bible, pray, and then open the Bible and start to read the Bible, read the scriptures. This is this is the word of the Lord. He will teach you through his word. He reveals himself through his word. So if you have never read the Bible before, I would just encourage you to get a copy of the Bible and just start reading it. Start reading wherever the Lord leads you. A good, uh, you know, you can start in the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You could start in Genesis. Um, yeah, yeah. And try to get a Bible that has commentary that mm-hmm. might explain some of the um, some of the scriptures and explain some of the, the history and yeah. the kind of language that they would have Right, to used. fill in the gaps yeah. for you if you're mm-hmm. brand new. Right. A very good resource is, I've got one right here on in, my, in our little pod lab, is the Journey Bible. Mm. The Journey Bible is a uh, soft paperback version of the Bible. It has the New International Version in it. It's put out by uh, Zondervan. You can get it online. Mm-hmm. It's less than 20 bucks, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's fantastic. And it has a reading plan in there. So you could, you know, start with day one. You're going to read this. And, and they kind of explain as, as you go. Another great uh, soft cover Bible is called the Life Recovery Bible. This one I'm holding in my hands right now. It's the New Living Translation. And it's for anybody who struggles with fiction, which is, you know, all of us have our yeah. issues. So that's, that's my, that's the word of God. I'm sticking mm-hmm. to it. I, that's my story. I am not deviating from that. There's no shame in my game. That yeah. is the way it is. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that we needed to share? No, I don't think so. Just uh, what's coming next. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what I did want to share? I wrote it here and then I forgot. Um, COVID-19 forced us to change. It changed a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And if you're catching this episode, but you haven't listened mm. to our episode eight, which is about change, yeah. and we review the book, Who Moved My Cheese, tune in, because yeah. that's a good episode. Yeah. And it helps if, if uh, COVID-19 has forced some change that has been difficult. I think that episode would also be helpful. Mm-hmm. All right. We have a couple of reminders for our listeners. We're, we're building this podcast. We're a baby baby infant mm-hmm. podcast so we're gonna cry like infants <laughs> and express say, our needs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feed me. we need we're learning how podcasts work and one of the ways that podcasts work is when people listen to the podcast and they download it that gets recorded somewhere in the computer yeah and, and, young people that would listen to me say this like your if your daughter heard me saying this she'd be laughing she has heard it actually <laughs> she'd be like oh mrs de Graff, please so what we need you to do is if you're enjoying our podcast and we hope that you are we need subscribers and followers mm-hmm. there's a way for you to click a little button that says either subscribe or follow find the find it come on now you can do it <laughs> Find the button. Yeah. I think on um, Spotify, I believe it's follow. It is. But on Apple Podcasts, it's subscribe. Right. They mean the same thing. Yeah. And also Podbean says, uh, it either says follow or followers. It's the same thing. But um, I wish they would stick to one word. I wish they would too. I was talking with Emily actually, and Mm -hmm. she agreed too that, Subs- the button subscribe sounds like something you have to pay for <laughs> it does and so- but it's but it's totally free absolutely yeah okay the other thing so we're we're, gonna, we're just asking our audience to do this because we have a goal we would like to reach 1,000 subscribers slash followers by Easter 
2021. That's our goal. All oh. right. Oh, oh, is that right. you? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. We thought we okay. thought we silenced. We it's, we went into notifications and we said no notifications. Yeah. So well, it's just the what I don't. It's funny. It's not showing up on my phone. It oh. was. It was. Oh, it didn't show up. It was my phone, but it was the computer that made the noise, not my phone. My phone is not indicating that I had a phone call, but the computer. Anyway, yeah, you can whatever. see why Catherine and I need help with technology. Yes, we can't figure these yes. things out. And I was just about to say that the goal is not, you know, the goal of a thousand people by April 1st. It's not just because we want to have a whole bunch of, you know, followers and so forth. It's because we really do want to reach people we and do. encourage people. And that's the main goal. Truly. Right. This is our mission. We're on yes. a mission from God. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the Blues Brothers. Jake before, and Elroy. Right yeah. <laughs> Uh, and if you like the, any particular episode, there's a little thumbs up somewhere, a like button. You can hit the like button. You can also comment and, and talk to us because we just record these and put them out there into cyberland and just kind of cross our fingers and pray and yeah. hope that it goes, you know, well. Yeah. But we we want to serve you. So if there are things that you want us to topics that you'd like us to do, please let us know. New episodes are dropping every week on Wednesday at noon. We do have an editorial calendar that we put together of topics we think women like us or women like you would like to hear about. Listen um, to how, how much we're learning advanced. You used the word dropping. I know. So we're really cool, folks. <laughs> we because... dropped an episode. <laughs> what? Pick it up. Yeah. And then share. So we're, we're asking a lot of our listeners right now, like we're this baby podcast that we want to grow, but we're just asking you if you like it, um, follow us and subscribe, make comments, tell like, others. and tell other people, mm -hmm. share. All right. Well, let's give a preview of our next episode. What are we talking about next, Catherine? Mm, what are we talking about next? <laughs> cheap vacations. Oh, yes. Cheap vacation. <laughs> I wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, how to take a vacation on the cheap. There you go. Mm -hmm. So tune into that. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly hope that you have enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we have enjoyed making it. That's right. <laughs> and you've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast, and I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.